abdominal injuries we will start in abdominal injuries by renal injuries renal injury and liver injury and splenic injury actually are uncommon uncommon in the normal organ because the normal organ is elastic deeply seated in the body protected by the lower ribs and the lumbar vertebrae and thoracic vertebrae um, solid abdominal organs renal liver and splenic injury are more common in middle-aged males who are active and more exposed to trauma associated injuries in the abdomen and outside the abdomen are very common especially fracture lower ribs uh, injury of the pleura and lungs diaphragmatic injuries associated the liver and the splenic injuries and actually the prognosis after treatment depends on the associated injuries concerning the renal injury the renal injury is the second common urological injury after the urethra and it is the third common solid abdominal injury after the spleen is the commonest solid abdominal organ to be injured followed by the liver and the third is the kidneys renal injuries uh, is actually uncommon also because the, the kidney is mobile in its fat therefore it frees away from the force of trauma also the kidney has a strong fibrous capsule which uh, protect the parenchyma from splitting and separation what is the etiology of renal injuries liver injuries and splenic injuries the solid uh, abdominal organs uh, are common to be injured if there is pathology in the organ because pathology in the organ leading to the organ is friable and the pathological organ is usually enlarged like hepatomegaly spinelomegaly enlarged kidney therefore any trauma to this enlarged organ which is already friable leading to easy rupture of this organ um, the exciting uh, factor is closed trauma closed trauma like that or like that closed trauma and usually occur in blunt injuries like a car accident or accident by a blunt object like that also the exciting factor is open injury like a stab by a knife or a bullet uh, spontaneous injury of uh, the kidney or liver or spleen is rare iatrogenic injury is also rare due to retractors used during operation on the surrounding viscera um, what is the uh, pathology of uh, this uh, conditions the pathology of uh, this condition there are degrees of injuries and the degrees of injuries ranging from first of all this is a kidney which is surrounded by a fibrous capsule and surrounded by very renal fat this is 
the first uh, injury which is bruises and the ecchymosis of uh, the kidney bruises and the ecchymosis of the kidney or subcapsular hematoma subcapsular hematoma or superficial tear superficial tear affecting the cortex only if there is a superficial tear usually the bleeding produce subcapsular hematoma or less commonly perinephric hematoma um, deep tear deep tear extending from the cortex to the medulla uh, deep tear usually resulting in hemorrhage in the pelvical cell system leading to hematuria the tear may be complete tear affecting the cortex medulla and open on the pelvical cell system and in complete tear the bleeding outside leading to renal hematoma or perinephric hematoma and the bleeding inside the pelvical cell system leading to hematuria there may be uh, also abulsion of a bull or abulsion of a pedicle or there may be bulbed or shattered kidney therefore this uh, more simple uh, drawing the renal injuries ranging from uh, superficial tear affecting the cortex only with uh, berry or subcapsular hematoma uh, or the hemorrhage may uh, be outside the kidney leading to berry nephric hematoma the injury may be deep tear deep tear open on the pelvical cell system leading to hematuria the tear may be superficial and deep extending from the capsule to the pelvic cell system this is called the complete tear and this is resulting in hemorrhage inside the pelvic cell system leading to hematuria and outside the kidney leading to perinephric hematoma there is avulsion of a bull avulsion of a pedicle and the bulbed or shattered kidney. What is the complication of uh, renal injuries? Complication of renal injuries were and uh, in case of uh, hepatic injury or splenic injury, first of all, we think about hemorrhage. The hemorrhage may be internal hemorrhage. Internal hemorrhage may be intra-peritoneal hemorrhage or extra-peritoneal hemorrhage or intra-pleural hemorrhage leading to hemothorax. Sure, uh, intra-peritoneal hemorrhage if there is diaphragmatic injury. The bleeding may be external hemorrhage in case of open injuries. Sure, hemorrhage internal or external hemorrhage leading to the second complication which is hypovolemic shock in case of uh, intraperitoneal hemorrhage the blood which is very good uh, medium for uh, proliferation of bacteria may be mixed with urine or if there is associated bowel injury it may be associated with uh, contents of the bowel which is rich in bacteria therefore blood with urine or bowel contents ending by peritonitis um, traumatic anuria in case of renal injury anuria may occur due to many factors first of all from hypotension of shock leading to arrest of glomerular fertility 
or just a trauma may lead to reflex inhibition of both kidneys or there may be injury of a solitary kidney. Um, if uh, there is massive bleeding pass through the ureter, this leading to clotting of blood. Clot of blood in the ureter leading to hyperbristalsis in the ureter, leading to clot colic. Or the blood clot may enter the urinary bladder with obstruction of the bladder neck leading to clot retention of urine. Sure, uh, this hematoma may be secondary infected. Secondary infection in this trauma and hemorrhage may lead to secondary hemorrhage and may lead to perinephric abscess. Severe trauma to the coverings of the kidney may lead to nephrotosis. If the trauma is directed to the renal vessels, this may lead to renal aneurysm or renal thrombosis. Renal artery thrombosis leading to renal ischemia, and we all know that renal ischemia leading to renal hypertension. Fibrosis, healing of all these wounds in the kidney, leading to fibrosis of the renal tissue and the perirenal tissue. Fibrosis in the perirenal tissue may compress and obstruct the ureter, leading to hydronephrosis. Renal atrophy may occur due to healing of these wounds by renal fibrosis and thrombosis of the renal vessels leading to ischemia, severe ischemia of the kidney and renal atrophy. Um, Berinephric hematoma. Berinephric hematoma may liquefy and the blood absorb it, leaving here around the kidney a clear fluid. And this fluid called berirenal cyst or urinoma. Finally, the trauma may open a track between the renal artery and renal vein, leading to arteriovenous fistula in the renal vessels. What is the clinical picture of uh, renal injuries? In all injuries of solid organs, liver, spleen, or kidney, sure there is history of trauma, especially to the lower ribs, with bruises or abrasion and wound in the characteristic site. Concerning the kidney, the characteristic site of trauma which suggesting renal injury is the loin. And you all know that the loin is the area between the last rib and the iliac crest. If there is history of trauma in the loin with bruises, abrasion, or wounds in the loin, this suggests renal injury. The second uh, thing, sure, there is manifestation of internal hemorrhage. Manifestation of internal hemorrhage appear in the form of two things. First thing is hypovolemic shock. The second is if the hemorrhage inside the peritoneum and there is free fluid in the peritoneal cavity, we can perform shifting thalamus. Sure, during examination of uh, this patient, there has been tenderness, rigidity, and the swelling in the characteristic site concerning the kidney, there is pain, tenderness, swelling, rigidity in the loin. We all know that uh, tenderness, pain, rigidity, all are manifestation of irritation of parietal peritoneum. 
here irritation of parietal peritoneum by the blood there is uh, nausea vomiting and abdominal distension why there is nausea vomiting and abdominal distension this is due to intestinal atony due retroperitoneal bleeding um, manifestations of peritonitis may occur within few uh, hours or days um, manifestations of associated injuries are very common and the injury may be appear and uh, discovered during exploration laparotomy for penetrating abdominal trauma in any urological injury in any urological injury hematuria is very common hematuria is a cardinal sign of ut injury hematuria not proportionate to the severity of the injury and usually appear in the first voiding but it may be delayed due to hypotension in early trauma but after recovery from shock and elevation of the blood pressure hematuria will appear the hematuria may be continuous or intermittent and the hematuria may absent if there is no blood reach this area the kidney and the ureter how uh, no blood reaches this area in avulsion of abdicle or if there is ureteric injury if there is ureteric injury or a bunch of medical uh, hematuria is absent in renal injury uh, there may be uh, manifestations of uh, ureteric colic or uh, retention of urine due to clot clot migrating in the ureter leading to hyperpristasis in the ureter and leading to ureteric colic as we all know it's a feature from the urosurgery and uh, there is manifestation of clot retention of urine due to obstruction of the blood and neck. Um, in case of uh, renal injury and in pancreatic injury, there is retroperitoneal hemorrhage. This retroperitoneal hemorrhage may appear as a gray Turner sign. This is a gray Turner sign. What is gray Turner sign? Bellowish discoloration of the lower part of the flank and the back due to retroperitoneal hematoma. Very common in renal and pancreatic injury. Um, this is a clinical picture of uh, renal injury uh, and we will continue investigations and treatment in the next video. Thank you for good listening and good luck.